And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some mono black vampires. This is a donation deck that we got yesterday that we're going to be playing today. Um, that's uh, whenever we had we played mono black mid range yesterday, and the viewer that donated for this deck said that they're playing a mono black mid range deck also, with a little bit of a different twist on it. And so let's give this one a try. So I didn't want to just call it Mono Black Midrange again, since we just played Mono Black Midrange yesterday. So that's why I'm calling it Mono Black Vampires, but it's it's really more of a midrange deck with a vampire sub theme than just a dedicated vampire deck. Um, but yeah, we we do have that vampire sub theme, of course, with the Soren Imperious Bloodlord, and we have some good cheap vampires. Like I like Zealot in these kind of decks that uh, where you want to have a good amount of lands whenever you have a higher curve that it just helps you hit your land drops. So Zealot helps there. Of course, Knight is a good pressure, um, you know, all the time. Early game, mid game, late game, it's good pressure. Uh, Vampire of the Dire Moon is a good d defensive card, um, blocking here with Death Touch. But we have some really interesting cards to put in with the Soren Minus ability. Obvious our, obviously, our best one is the Champion of Dusk. But there's also a Haunt of, the, of Hightower in this deck. So maybe we'll have the turn three put in Haunt of Hightower. That'll be interesting. We'll see if how that goes for us um besides that we got airless is our only other zombie uh you know whenever we gain life get some counters get this thing bigger and then we have just a smattering of value cards between cavalier of night dread presence midnight reaper ravenous jupacabra and we have one copy of the big dread shade here as well um which so we have we have three different options between reaper airless and dread shade of cards to get back with cavalier of night whenever it dies so this will be interesting to try out. You know, we're playing some different cards that don't always play. I'm excited about Finale of Eternity. This card can be pretty powerful if we get to a very late game state where we have a Cabal Stronghold or two in play with a whole bunch of swamps. Finale of Eternity uh, could, you know, return all of our creatures. Also, we could get X's 10 uh, in that case. Um, but yeah, it looks like our sideboard's filled with removal. Um, we have a gravestone in here also for like the command the dread horde decks that way and then also a thought distortion for control um, i haven't played very much thought distortion but i've had with that being said i've had a time or two where thought distortion has just completely breaking the game open like one where my opponent had like a lot of cards it wasn't looking good for me play thought distortion and boom, it's over. And kind of the same way, the other way, I've had an opponent play a Thought Distortion on me when playing a control deck. And I had nothing left. So we'll see how that one does for us. But let's get on to it. So we have Mono Black Vampires. All right, so with our donation decks, as we always do, let's go ahead and play through a traditional constructed league. See if we can get to five wins before two losses, or to see how many wins we can get. Let's see how it does. All right, as customary, last couple of days, we are going to look at a hand that we have to mulligan, and we will do that. I think I'm just gonna get rid of the most expensive card here. Yep, this wouldn't be me playing if we didn't mulligan. We wouldn't uh, have a regular league here. So we got green black stuff going on.
Darn, couldn't activate the knight like I wanted to there. Let's get a chump block. So we do have a good amount of removal in hand for cards like your rock and Cavalier of Thorns and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to try to make both these knights two threes. The very well timed dismember. <laughs> yep. Yeah, our Jun our Jun deck had four blood suns. <laughs> we stopped stop playing those and immediately get paired against the field deck. And now next you know next deck that we're gonna be playing, Grixis Blood Sun, we won't we won't get paired against field at all with that deck. It'll just be all aggro, they'll run us over. Playing Thought Erasure before Rejuvenator. Why would you not do that and then do the surveil? Do all the surveil stuff. Oh well. Field of the Dead still pretty messed up. We're still just <laughs> gonna be losing to it either way. Yeah, that was a, a horrible turn for us, two Field of the Deads. I gotta hope, like, I don't even know, like, what could be good for us for them to have in hand. They just have lands in hand that are just playing multiple 2-2s. Two and obviously they have, the, they have the Memorial Genius that they can pop. They can also pop the Blast Zone to kill Knight of the Ebon Legion. Yeah, that was like us yesterday. Yeah, we, we played a lot of Field of the Dead decks yesterday. Um, we have a couple Legion's End in the deck. There's two Legion's End. So they could have that, but that's just a temporary reprieve. It's not like we play Legion's End and then we deal 19 damage to them. Like, we had Legion's End away some 2-2s, and then they just, the next turn, they just play another land, and... Not good for us here. I found nothing beyond my own obligations. Our fates thirst for life. Well, we'll have to see. 
yeah, I mean, Field of, yeah, Escape Shift will, will definitely be, and just even, yeah, like, most most people playing Field of Dead are not playing Escape Shift right now anyway, but we'll just have to see what it's like in Historic as well, um, because, like, we don't know what's going to be in Throne of Eldraine. There's a, there's a good chance that there's going to be some card printed in Throne of Eldraine that is very good against Field of the Dead, or makes Field of the Dead less powerful because i'm not expecting like for how much field of dead is just dominated this season i'm not expecting there just to be a, a new set like a rotation and a new set release and you know new standard that everybody is supposed to be excited for and then it's just everybody playing field of the dead deck still i'm not expecting that to happen i mean i wizards doesn't want that to happen that's that's not good for the excitement of the game or anything. And so I, I'm i expecting something in Throne of Eldraine to be printed. And, and I don't know what that could possibly be. But I'm expecting something to be printed to curb the power of Field of the Dead. So we'll see. I don't know why my opponent didn't attack with a Rejuvenator, because if I block Rejuvenator, I take lethal. So it's just a free attack. No, Gizmo, it's not. All right, so it looks like we have two more Legion's Ends, but again, like, Legion's End in this kind of matchup isn't... This isn't like Scape Shift, where all you have to do is kill the zombies once, and then, you know, you're... you're going to be doing better. Well, that being said, I mean, we're still playing them, of course. So there is a cry in a ritual of sit as well. I like the cry because of Risen Reef. Gets that out of there as well. And even just their 1-1s. One um, maybe Cavalier of Night. Yeah, Cavalier of Night doesn't sound too thrilling. I don't think I really want Duress. Not a whole lot to do with that. Or Thought Distortion. Maybe just a Soot instead of the other Cavalier of Night. I'm keeping in Chupacabras instead of Noxious Grasp. But they're similar kind of cards. That'd be cool to draw Haunt of the High Tower here. And be able to play Haunt to High Tower on turn three with Soren. That would be fun to play.
Well, Champion of Dusk is a good card to put in also. Not as cool as Haunt of the High Tower, but could be more effective. Never mind. Hey, Tetra. Welcome, welcome. Pass turn. I'm not going to just be playing Chupacabra on four as, as just a 2-2. Two -two. I'm not killing like a Rejuvenator or anything else. Well, I guess a Risen Reef. Alright, Risen Reef is something to kill. When, I'm, when I say like the Rejuvenator or anything else, I was thinking more a Boreal Grazer than a Reef. Yeah, I'm expect yeah, I'm excited for Throne of Eldraine as well. Yeah, that'll be that'll be good. Should be late September on Arena. So we are looking at basically like a, a month away or I guess probably less than a month away now. <laughs> hey, are you next? More Field of the Deads. Hooray. Probably just putting Risen Reef back, but I guess they don't really have lands, because I'm not sure if they played a land that last turn. I'm, of course, going to be playing the Dreadshade here. Dreadshade can do some good pressuring. So yeah, they took the Field of Ruin to be able to get to try to get to like the seven different lands. So that is kind of good news that they do have two field of ruin or field of the dead, sorry, in the graveyard. Is there ever, question is, has there ever been an exchange control of two target lands card? I'm not sure what, like, role, role reversal? Does that exchange control of lands? Uh, 
I drink only the finest. And you smell well aged. Ooh, it does. Maybe we need to make a roll reversal deck. Steal some Field of the Deads that way. Try to just kill them with Soren. Because they should just have a, a lot of blockers and everything. Well, that would have been a good reason to kill Risen Reef, though. Is it Yurok? Could make them, uh, not not chump, but trade. I guess we could make them trade. Your rock for dreadshade. How much mana do we have? So that just adds one. So nine. If they have to block here, they go to three. If they have an instant speed spell, this is gonna be this is gonna be bad for me. Ah, uh, they have a cast down. Darn it. All right, well, that's, that's really bad for me. Ugh. I had a really good plan if they did not have an instant speed spell. I bestow a mighty curse. <laughs> Why do they always just have to have it? Uh, well, I mean, might as well just use this man before it goes away. All right, so plan was... Sack the knight, kill the grazer, be able to attack with these three. You know, sack the knight to the Soren, kill the grazer. They would have to block with, like, Yurok would had would have had to block the Dreadshade, and they would have taken six, so they would have gained the three from Yurok, so they would go to three, where the next turn, like the Soren sacking the Champion Dusk would kill them. If they didn't have that instant speed removal spell, but they did, so. Here we are. Watch your temper. Hopefully no land. Oh no, not a, not only a land, but a, a land and a removal spell for Knight of the Ebon Legion. Uh. That's spectacular. Hey, Soul Farmer. Uh, 
That's just spectacular. We don't have much of a chance here. Oh, I, don't, I don't know, Kurtash. I, uh, just nothing ever works. We're in a terrible funk the last couple of days. Losing all our matches. No attacks. We have Cavalier of Night in this deck, Emmanuel. We've played, I've played three Cavalier of Night decks the last two days, so I don't, I don't know what to say to. Why does nobody play Cavalier of Night? The previous deck we just played was a Cavalier of Night deck. This one has Cavalier of Night. We played one yesterday. Uh, the Sultai Arcbow that we're going to play later also has Cavalier of Night. We actually have three decks today that have Cavalier of Night. So, you know, I don't know what to say to you.
That was a heck of a turn for us. I don't think it's really worth it to attack with like the two twos also because it just gives them a really easy block with your rock. That was a good clearing of the battlefield. We're still not necessarily ahead, depending on what they do here. It's a good sign for us that they just drew with Archer Verasco immediately, though. You have that if the there you go. It worked. Okay, good. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to work because we were switching songs. Just keep on chump blocking with their two zombies that they make forever. And they're going to keep on drawing two cards a turn because of Archer Varaska. That should just be game four cards. It's really hard to deal with. Have less than 12 minutes. They've been playing so slowly. Seven more minutes. We did have that good turn two turns ago, but then next turn, opponent draws a couple, couple removal spells. We draw a couple lands, and now suddenly we are dead. This is game two, and I conceded pretty early in game one. Yeah, when they played the Tamiyo for the Arch of Araska, they didn't have anything, but then, and immediately drew with Arch of Araska again. But out of those three cards, the, the two cheap removal spells to use with their, their last four mana. It was looking really good for us whenever they just drew again with Arch of Araska, but that's what they had with the, the four mana was two removal spells. And then that turn turn into this. I'm not sure how long Ferocidon was legal before it was banned. I don't know. And it wasn't really like Ferocidon it was it was a surprise in uh, yeah, I mean this is this is just lethal with the 
zombies still. I mean, if not, it is the next turn. Um, it was a surprise in the fact that Ferrostan was never like the focal point of mono red, but they didn't want to to ban the mythic rares that were the focal point of the deck, Hazaret and Chandra because those cards were pretty expensive and they didn't want to hurt people's wallets. Chandra was was Chandra was a huge part of that deck. You know, people people always just say it was all because of Hazaret. Chandra was an incredibly powerful planeswalker that I think people didn't really realize how good it was, but ever since um but I mean, it's been a good, like after, uh, what, what was it? I guess Bant Company, I guess it would have been that. Oh man, we had Citadel. Yeah, we have these two Citadels that we could have just drawn that whole match. That would have been nice. But anyway, Chandra was just like in the best, basically ever since Kaladesh, like the first month or two, it was in the best deck for, it was in the best deck in standard. It was like a four of in the best deck of standard or, you know, close to that um, for like 18 months, like 18 of the 24 months or maybe even more that it was in standard, that it was legal, maybe 20 months. Um, cause it was, cause you know, not only was it like the mono red decks, but then of course, like all the teamer decks, like the, the green red, like started, you know, like with green red Marvel um, and then like Teamer Marvel, Teamer Sahili, the four color Sahili, like all, all, everything in standard. And then, you know, and then of course the mono red decks after that, even everything in standard was Chandra was a huge part of it. Yeah. Chandra Torch of Defiance. Seemed like it was a forgotten card when people talk about the, the mono red deck of that day. People say it was Hazaret that caused Ramanap Ruins and um, Rampaging Ferrostan to get banned, but Chandra was a real big part of that. When people start screaming, I know well, Hugs no and I'm. I'm sorry to hear that that you got knocked around, but I'm glad to hear that the mono black from yesterday that we played looked pretty strong playing against it. Happy to hear that. I drink only the finest. I so if we attack Chandra then Chandra kills Soren. Like, if they just, like, let Chandra take it, Chandra kills Soren. Let's start pumping up this Champion of Dusk. No, Firebrand. Oh, uh, that's the worst card for me to see. Because that, that gets to just block and then sacrifice, and you don't gain life. Oh, or they're... Not doing that. I guess they're respect. just gonna kill Soren. Suppose. Yeah, arcane adaptation does work with Soren's minus three. Yeah. This is not my final demise. So if I. Attack Chandra, we take five. But then Chandra doesn't threaten ultimate like the rest of the game. But ultimate's going to be a huge problem.
if if they let Chandra take it, I would have gone with Aerialist plus Knight. Would have grown Knight immediately. Of course, we would have had five less life as well. So the lose two life would hurt a little bit more. Sit back and watch it burn. All right, Frasso's Contempt, please. We got a couple of Contempts in here. Hmm. All right, so if I play Zealot, I won't be able to play Citadel. I think that's fine. Alright, looks like we're dead to Chandra. Legion's End does not kill Chain Whirler. Just get rid of this thing. <laughs> Should have got rid of the Firebrand, dang. But yeah, that's that's seven damage from Chandra, then they have enough damage here. There you go. Arcane Adaptation and then Soren Great Worm. Nice. That sounds pretty sweet. Hmm. So Citadels are out of here. Let's play a bunch of duresses, I guess. High Tower does have lifelink as well. I don't love Knight of the Ebon Legion in this matchup. He usually just gets shocked. That being said, it does only cost one mana, so like it trades one for one with shock, at least. Um, I'm gonna cut aerialist. I know aerialist can grow if we're gaining life, but if aerialist, like that, that's a card that does trade down. Being three toughness. If we take out the Dusk Legion Zelts too, does that make Soren not not good enough? Just don't have like hardly any vampires. Maybe I'm gonna trim a Soren. Why can't you have four toughness? Threaten Innistrad. 
don't think I really want to just minus, you know, like let them then kill Soren with the Firebrand, strike my high tower. I basically want to make it hard for them to kill the Sorens, so I'm going to just keep ticking up. So like, yeah, maybe they just strike Knight of the Ebon Legion here, attack Soren for some, but it's you know, it's harder to do five damage to it. And then if they if they would do if they would do that with like killing the knight and so on, then we'd be able to set up the ritual of soot for next turn. But making it harder for them to just to to kill knight, you know, like Firebrand just didn't kill it. <laughs> Weak. Make them spend more equity. Alright, Frenzy, shut off the hand. Alright, they're going Frenzy. That Champion Dusk was a good draw. I bestow a mighty Get that thing nice and big. And we're one land away from just being able to play Haunt and turn it into four toughness immediately. Also... Big lifelink creatures. I like where we're at. Yeah, they've used a lot more resources on the Sorens I've been just ticking up the whole time than if I would have minused immediately. Darkness will always return. Our hand's not even good anyway. I'm actually going to play Knight over the Dreadshade. Just a little bit cheaper card. And of course does work with Soren and everything. And arguably better at the late game also. Hey Paul. And Cajun guy. I think I should take out Haunt of the High Tower. Definitely could see that. It does have lifelink. But yeah, it's. <clears throat> it needs some help. So I was thinking of like. Wanting to play Cry before playing Vampire. Mm. We don't have land, though. Let's play the Vampire to trade with the Firebrand, because then if we draw land, we can have... Like, we're going to want to play Cruelty next turn for Spitfire anyway. So it'd be a little while before we'd actually play the cry.
That worked out for us. That worked out for us quite well. We're actually doing stuff. Hey, Raffle Guru. We are doing stuff. Defeating you will not bring me pleasure. Again, not minusing the Soren so they can kill my Soren immediately. Tempting to put Champion of Dusk in here. But then if I do that. Alright, so if I minus a put in Champion of Dusk, they immediately skewer the Sorin. Nah. Even though we don't get a counter on the Chupacabra, it still gains uh, Death Touch and Life Link. So we still get to gain two life with Soren's tick up. Alright, so that turns on Skewers. They're going to double Skewer. Still made them use, you know, just a ton of resources there. Basically, all their stuff. That was... Three pretty valuable cards. Three burn spells that Soren ate up there. Champion into champion. And I think we got this one. There we go. All right, picked up a win. I don't remember the last one we had, but we got one. How about that? We can do that. We can actually win. GG's. Ugh. Ugh. GG's. Yeah, we're on the board. Now we'll see if we can turn that win column into a crooked number. Yep, we needed the Balding Yeti get in chat. That's what we needed. Trips Champion. Champion's a great card against control. They thought Razor away Soren. We may not be able to play our champions, though. What are the odds of drawing back-to-back -back Champion of Dusks after keeping two in hand? Basically impossible. Oh, hey, a card that stops Champion of Dusk from doing stuff. How about that? I think that's the, the scientific number is impossible. Before yeah, it would be, it'd be too, yeah, I mean, I could figure that out too, the calculator. I've got them all figured out. There's always an answer. Oh, gosh. No, it's, 
It's 2 out of 53 times 1 out of 52. Hase. That's a really big number. <laughs> yeah, so like 50 50. I didn't play Dusk Legion Zealot the turn before because they had Narset, so I couldn't draw a card off the Zealot, so I didn't play it the turn before. So, of course, Ashiok follow the three hands of combo. They're about to destroy all my lands. But I still need to play Champion of Dusk, so I have to just play more lands out. So that's that's really good for us getting... Getting two lands there, because that's what we're going we're gonna to need more lands now, after all of our lands get destroyed. isn't over until we figure out a solution. Um Well this the seasons are are monthly, Emmanuel. So like you know the 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 season starts on the 1st of the month and ends on like on the like the 30th or something like 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 the seasons are are just month are months, so rotation's gonna happen like the end of sep towards the end of September. There so so there there will still be house. part of like the next season will mostly be this format, but there will be like a few days where you can play the new format, but not many days. Sorry, I'm late. That's a pretty great card. I'll let them still play the cast down on the champion. That's awesome, Guru. Glad to hear it. My dreams dissipate like smoke. You're welcome, Manuel.
Yeah, it does look like, especially with drawing this Soren, that a while ago, if I was just attacking them, we may have been in a better spot. But of course, we don't know what they would have drawn if they would have just been able to keep Jace on the battlefield. But we know that we could have at least done it five damage earlier and, you know, maybe Not finish so them fast. off. Unclear. Seventeen cards in library. Hmm. That was not better than putting a counter on the vampire and having the vampire kill Teferi after putting a counter on it. Admittedly. All I did was like one extra point of Ashiok and my creature is dead. I kind of decided that I was going to be sacking it and, and went to attacks and then realized, then right after I clicked go to attacks. I was like I was like, wait, we could just put a counter on the vampire to kill Teferi. I definitely wanted to kill Teferi. So I took the wrong line there. But like they they don't have many cards left. Getting rid of like the card advantage engine like Teferi is pretty useful. Twelve cards, huh? This is but a taste of my power. <laughs> yeah, getting Ashiok off the battlefield for the ear damage is that is an important one. Wait, did I actually take up with the Soren? I meant to hit cancel so I could sacrifice. I didn't actually use it, did I? No, I didn't. Good. And yeah, just got rid of their planeswalkers and outgrinded them eventually. Took a little bit, but we got there. Let's bring in these duresses, bring some extra noxious grasp, this thought distortion. Yes, please. Um, just follow the three and target. No, it's just return two lands, land cards, no targeting. So I don't think Gravestone's worth it. Let's see. I don't need Legion's End. Um, Troops and Cavalier of Night aren't really spectacular. Finale of Eternity. I guess I have this Bloodfast in my deck, so I guess I could play it here. 
I'll play that instead of tubes. Sub notification should be working. Let's see. Yeah, the alert didn't go. Let's do this here, though. There we go. Yeah, hey, thanks, Emmanuel. Oh, we had we had one sub a couple hours ago. I just I guess I didn't mark that down either. So that's our second sub of the day. I don't know. Like sometimes you know, it just doesn't work for some reason, but. I can manually do them, and there we go. So thank you so much, Emmanuel. We got all the vampires this time. Hey, Tree Fitty. Yeah, and so MTG Bot says that's sub number one on the day. I guess for the other subscriber the notification didn't pop up either this isn't a fight you can win oh I've done the hero thing before here we go Oath of Kaya. Ow. Soren. On culture. Welcome to the family. These champion of dusks have been awesome, man. That card's good. That's more like it. And the Soren, the Soren card too. It's been another really strong one for us. Yeah, the Sultai Arc Bow should be fun. Yeah, I had a donation. Uh, to put that together, and it looks like it's going to be pretty sweet. Liking it. I've got it. All right, so now not bouncing Oath of Kaya to kill Soren. Meditate and prepare. My, I was not prepared for this. All right, get rid of all these things. Well, they had a couple more Narsets. I have just the trick for this. An Elder Spell. It's the fourth Narset. They're still not looking that bad, because, yeah, they get to bounce Othakai here, have Othakai kill Soren. It's not like we win this game just because of that, but... Wow. Why are they not killing my Soren? Do they not know that, that that's what that card does? I've got time. Cost six. And just dies to Othakaya. Fine.
I bestow a mighty curse. Yeah, keep these thing keep these things above out the Kaya range. Let's try this. Ugh. Hmm. What do we want to do about that? Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I didn't. I purposely didn't play the, the swamp first. So I could play a swamp off the top. These childish games bore me. As long as we don't die this turn to Othakai, which we shouldn't, be a bad idea. we'll be looking okay. Because Haunt has Haunt has Life Link. The Soren will give Life Link to something else. Gain 11. Start going crazy with Bola Citadel again. Activate. I'm not gonna activate blood fast, I don't think. Guys Wrath, are we still playing? Hey six one nine. Oh, did I have the ten permanents for the Citadel? I guess I could have done that then. Yeah, why isn't Grey, Grey Merchant standard legal, right? Man, that Bola Citadel card is amazing. That card is really good. So that was a that was a pretty sweet game. We got to Thought Distortion, take all of their cards, and then Citadel and go crazy. <laughs> No, Wanted Scoundrels, yeah, it's a 4-3 it's a for 2, but it's not a card you really want because whenever it dies, which it's going to die, um, that's how standard is, 4-3 four, four is not going to survive in standard, and so whenever it dies, they get two treasures and it ramps your opponent, it's not worth it. Looks like we're playing against vampires. 
We don't have the best anti-vampire hand. That's okay. Legion's End. Or Champion of Dusk. One of the two. Yeah, does the Mono Black Vampire deck beat the Orza Vampire deck? The Battle of the Vampires. Wow, just nothing? Ooh, that's pretty good for us. They just had nothing. Um, it's still just good to Soren Minus. Soren Minus is probably going to die. Like, Soren's probably going to die if we Minus. But it's just worth it with how our hand is, of how we can't play, like, anything. This is likely Welcome removal spell here. Ooh, no removal spell. And then land legions end. There are a couple of good ones. Just had nothing to do on turn three. That's pretty good for us. Yeah, they gotta have like the three fours and champion of dusks. Sanctum seekers. They gotta just be chilling with like sanctum seekers and champion of dusks. They didn't do anything there. Nah, Cavalier is an elemental knight. Not a vampire. That's a shade. Not a vampire either. That's a vampire rogue. It's weird. They'll shock and then pet the cat. Ah, so it's four mana removal. So if I block with the knight, Soren stays alive. So I'd rather have knight or Soren alive. Probably knight. Probably rather have knight alive, right? Or no, Soren. I mean, probably have Soren alive. Yeah, like Soren's a better card. No, I'm not playing a Hexproof Vampire. Those are not cards I was really expecting. Not a good draw for me. Curse your bloodline. I don't like just playing one of the three drops. Just 
Playing the five drops isn't spectacular either, though. Could just go Cavalier. Of, so if we went Cavalier of Knight, then we would be able to double spell the next turn, then be able to play Champion and potentially draw two. I guess you. Now next next turn we can go Zealot, Cavalier of Knights, Sack Zealot to kill a prophet. My bloodline flows through you. kill the blocking one. Not a huge difference between a 2-4 or a 3-5, but we'll just get rid of the one that can block. Do you want this Soren out of here? Yay, zero. Play shade first, then drop swamp, then aerialist. Uh okay, yeah. Yeah, you thought that was dread presence. Which we do have in our deck, and we could potentially draw. I'm going to activate that before playing a land because of that. Hey, Timmy. Welcome back. I drink only the finest. And you smell Thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um... Definitely considered giving the Dreadshade lifelink. Even though you don't get a counter on the Dreadshade, it, just, it can just be so big. We're just getting another Knight of the Ebon Legion back, right? Yeah. But putting the counter on, like this time we get to put the counter on the champion dust so it can get through that 3 5. Alright, Tim with that resub is our fourth sub of the day. Yeah, don donation decks are for tier 3 subs. Um, yeah. Donation decks are tier 3 subs. Or $20 donation. Alright, so they were like part vampires, but then part not vampires. Definitely still want the other Legion's Ends. Not sure if I really want Cry Soot. 
though. I'm supposed to be playing like Omnixus' Cruelty instead of Haunt of Hightower. I don't think so. Instead of like Dreadshade or Bloodthirsty Aerialist. No, I'll just keep those in. I'll just keep those in. <clears throat> hey, there you go, Radical Guru. Santa Boot coming through. Yeah, maybe a maybe a cruelty over um, a cavalier of night. No, what are these hands? Keep. So knight and aerialist. Is Vampire of the Dire Moon really that good? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, prime subs are like the the your tiers don't change by month. Prime Prime subs are tier one subs. Those are the five dollars a month. Tier two are the ten dollars a month, and tier three is the twenty five dollars a month. So it's not it's not something that that changes uh, unless no, no blocks unless you change it can I block pride mate darn Ooh, yeah, yeah. Where, where are you moving to? No, so no, so tier three subs are not being subbed for three months. That's not, that's not a tier three sub. I want to kill this resplendent angel. Sorry. Took a while here. Let's just go Zelda. though. No. Oh, really punished for not for just like letting the auto tap tap my swamps. Uh Darn. That would have been nice to have the knight out there too, be able to block that one one. Yes, um, 
indestructible creatures do not die to death touch. Yeah, because death touch basically puts lethal attack damage onto the creatures, but if they have indestructible, they will not die. Well, I would have liked to Chupacabra the Sanctum Seeker, but getting a couple knights out here isn't so bad. Certainly hope for no Legion's End over there. Speaking of Legion's End. That's the card I wanted to play. We're still <clears throat> kind of in it. <laughs> Chupacabra's in the vampire deck because so the cause vampires need pets. <laughs> I will take it personally. All right, well that that'll do it. My bloodline flows through you. Oh. Thought they were gonna sacrifice one and kill my Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's what I was thinking was gonna happen there. All right, let's see if we don't go to, down to five cards this time. Let's see if we can keep a seven. Still don't think I want cruelty. Yeah, I'm going to play cruelty instead of dreadshade. Yeah, let's do that. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather just have Omnixus's cruelty there. Yeah, Chup's a vampire dog. All right, keeping our hand. We got our control deck start. We didn't have our black cat last game. That hurt us. Hmm. I may need to Legion said, you know, Danto Vanguard. I want to have a little bit more information, but maybe they play like another knight or two. And then at Legion's end those. So if I go Soren minus this turn, I found to nothing. My own obligation. I yeah, that's that's just what I'm doing. Ah, uh, you have to work this weekend with the sub battle Saturday, and it could be a, a twelve hour. 
<clears throat> maybe doing 12 hour stream on a Saturday also. All we gotta do is hit the sub goal today, tomorrow, and Friday, and then we got 12 hour sub battle Saturday. So that's pretty exciting. There we go. We're going to be able to attack them for four. Good counter on our Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right. We are three and one. Keeping it going. Yeah, the sub-battle streams are a lot of fun, Caesar. They're a lot of fun. You know, we've probably done around five, six, seven of them so far, and maybe a little more than that. Maybe like ten of them. I don't know. But yeah, they're always a lot of fun. I guess I should play the Vampire of the Dire Moon. Nah. <laughs> hey, nerds. Where's my... There we go. There's the black kitty. Need this for our mono black deck. Yeah, I know, opponent. My hand's not very good. Lots of removal against the control deck. <laughs> yeah, definitely uploading them to YouTube. Glad glad you like look, watching them over there. For the most part, the the sub battle streams are less viewed than other. Other streams. I guess this was a bad tick up for Cry of the Carnarium. Should have gone to Knight, but I'm thinking that like if they just like singular removal spell, they want to kill Knight, not kill Zealot. So I want to pump Zealot. But yeah, taking Dire Moon probably doesn't mean they have Cry of the Carnarium, right? Probably would have just let me have Dire Moon. I guess taking Dire Moon, I guess that just means they probably want to slow me down as much as possible. So they take the one, taking like the one card I can cast. No, I am not making this up as I go. It's good now. Only time will tell. Could definitely see Kai's Wrath here. I'll put another creature out there. I can no longer stand by and watch. Don't worry, I got this. for life. 
I really should have seen that coming. <laughs> no, I haven't. 3D. I haven't played the that four color legend, the Kethis deck. Hey, way to go, nerds! Went to diamond with the rotation proof Demir control. That is awesome. Good job. Yeah, very good there. Good job. Hey, Narnan. This is but a taste of my power. I guess I could keep that, that land in hand for Dread Presence. I'm not playing another creature out on the battlefield. Like, I'm not playing the Dread Presence this turn, but I guess I could have kept it. Simply in hand. Oh, there you go, Manual. There, it showed up. Finally showed up there. Why, did they, why would they Tyrant scorn the Zealot and not the Knight? Deal with that Tyrant Scorn. Ooh, a Rotation Proof Vanifar deck. I don't think so. Don't think I have done that. Can I write that down? I already know one. I'm going to be doing rotation proof Chandra Tribal next weekend. So against Esper, we're bringing all these, this, 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 and then we cut. They may be... We don't really know if they're like Esper Hero or not. Like, considering they're playing Tyrant Scorn, actually, that, that's probably Esper Hero with Tyrant Scorn. They're probably scorning it up. So I'm going to keep Choops in. Or so they're probably heroing it up. So I'm going to keep Choops in. Um, keep some removal in. Last time I cut the Choops. Yeah, probably be Elementals. That's like the best thing to be doing with Vanifar after rotation, that we'll, what we got right now. Elemental Vanifar. All right, not a good hand, of course, but it has a lot of lands. I want to keep the lands against the control deck. We want to hit our land drops. We have some uh, very good but expensive cards with, like, Thought Distortion and the two um, Bolas of Citadel. So we want to hit our, be able to hit our land drops to get up to those. And then even, like, all the, the four Champion of Dusks, you know, just get hitting our land drops to get up to those as well. And so yeah, our, our hand's not good against Thought Erasure, but that's fine. Or like our hand is, our hand's not very good, so Thought Erasure also isn't that good. So the plan of like the keep the lot of lands that that plan is like then on turn two you draw your two drop, on turn three you draw your three drop. If you threaten that's that plan. And so yeah, we we just drew the three drop on turn three. There we go. They probably have another hostage taker, would be my guess. Or enter the God Eternals.
Because, yeah, with them, with them playing that and knowing that I have Chupacabra, they had to do that for some reason to, like, like they want me to, to actually play my creature kind of thing. Yeah, got to gotta take Big Teferi's. So that was a perfect time for that duress. Okay, Bola Citadel. Here's your chance. Next turn. You cannot hurt my hollow soul. No. Yeah, I don't think they played it to, to pressure Soren because they had Teferi in hand. They could they could just uh, tuck the Soren. I think they wouldn't mind if I would have played Chupacabra to kill the hostage taker because then they that would turn on into the God Eternals. Right on schedule. But if we just sit here and don't play anything, we don't pressure enter the God Eternals, or like we don't let them enter the God Eternals. Dusk Legion Zella would be a great draw, also. <laughs> or just. Still nothing. You just let me know if you're up for round two. When you do the keep the five land hand, drawing four more lands. It's not usually part of the plan. <laughs> Four out of seven. You cannot hurt my hollow soul. Five out of eight. This deck only has twenty four lands. So there's only 14 lands left in the 44 cards. Yeah, good news is Knight does not die to enter the God Eternals <laughs> when you have this much mana. Bad news is the knight is very bad against Hostage Shaker. Good thing we won game one.
All right, game number three. Knight or uh, hostage taker really is a problematic card. Am I supposed to be playing Omnixil's cruelties just for those? That card is so good against Knight of the Ebon Legion, with it just costing five mana to steal Knight of the Ebon Legion and, and replay it. That honestly kind of makes you not want to play Knight. I guess I have Contempts and Troops. Soren tick up. I'll just play this again. I wish I would have Chupacabra right away instead of instead of playing that Duress. That was like the, the big turn because then they did not hit the fifth land drop so we could have Duress the next turn and still take into Fairy. But I guess we would have died to the 4-4 a lot faster with Enter the God Eternals. So obviously immediately after drawing 38 lands, we only have a one lander. Thank you, deck. So double stronghold means we are not playing Dreadshade, so we'll just put the Dreadshade to the bottom. Not really sure how I'm beating Hostage Shaker here. I feel like I need to shoot the hero next turn. Yeah, M20 is a good set to to get packs of. If you want to get some packs. Uh, any of the the four that are not going away, there's all there's good reasons for all of them. But yeah, M20 is a really powerful set. War of the Spark, same thing. And then the other two Ravnica sets both have dual land, so some good stuff in those as well. That worked out really well. Welcome to the family. That worked out really well. I was like maybe the best hit off of Dusk Legion Zealot. Game two, that whole time, I was like, I just want to draw Zealots. Whenever we had, like, the Soren out there, like, that whole time, I just want to draw Zealot. This game, we finally drew Zealot, and it was amazing. Oh, I know that feeling, opponent.
So they're likely taking Zealot and then casting Zealot. All right, so I think the lesson is don't keep five landers. My opponent kept a five land with Hero and Hostage Taker, and they just drew the one Oath Akaya and a bunch of lands. Last game, I kept the five lander, and I just drew a bunch of lands. So I guess five landers are a trap. And both times, we were on the draw. Which game? Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know much about Classic WoW. Play my land already. I bestow a mighty curse. I played like one World of Warcraft a, a good amount whenever I was younger. I think it was like World of Warcraft 2, I think it was called. Something like that, it was on the PC. I haven't played many PC games, but I, I did that one. It was, I was a lot younger. I, it was a long time ago, I don't know. You know, it had like orcs and stuff. It's just like, that's just Warcraft. So not World of Warcraft. Okay, so yeah, not World of Warcraft. It wasn't that, so it was just Warcraft 2, I think. I played that game. That game was fun. That's my Warcraft experience. That was long, long ago, but I played that one a bit. And time to do Citadel stuff. Nine. Citadel stuff is always crazy. All right, we are four and one. We've made it to the final boss. It wasn't looking good. We were 0-1. I think we may have been down a game also after losing a whole bunch in a row earlier. But we were on a win streak. We got the final boss playlist. Yeah, this deck is working out pretty well. Uh, yeah, but level, I guess I'm at level, what, 96? I've I purchased levels a couple of times for different card styles that I wanted for different decks. So I've purchased levels a few times. Mono Red Final Boss. Makes sense.
So I kind of wanted to wait before playing Knight of the Ebon Legion, like where maybe I can have like Knight plus activation up so it doesn't just die right away. Alright, but uh, looks like my opponent's going to be Chain Whirlin. I'll go ahead and play it, actually, here. With having the Dread Presence, so we'll have something to do later. See, I'll just trade with that. So we need 5 mana, so Finale of Eternity could kill Chain Whirler. Yeah, we could do that, nerds. We we did a rotation proof Esper Hero, but yeah, we could also do Esper Control. Um, uh, do I play Dread Presence? If I don't, I may be dead. The problem is, of course, Dread Presence dies to a 3 damage burn spell. But if I don't, they attack me for 7, then they have 2 3 damage burn spells that just kill me. This would be a great sign if they do not have a burn spell. Please don't have a burn spell. Ugh, no, why does the last card have to be the burn spell? Oh man, if we could have untapped and had that available with Finale, that would have been great. I don't know why they're saying oops. But yeah, like that... If that last card was like a land, I actually would have liked where we were at. You know, like we would have been able to kill like those three things. Deal two to the, the Firebrand, gain two. Like honestly, if their last card was not Lightning Strike and was land, we, there's a really good chance we would have won this. Yeah, we needed Dread Presence there. That was about the only draw that we had that would have kept us alive. Get cry, cruelty, soot. We played against red earlier. We turn into pretty controlling deck. Cut the zealots. The reaper. Those cards aren't very good against. I think the aerialist also. Those cards aren't very good against chain whirler. Remember I cut a Soren. Did I keep a Citadel in? Maybe I did. Oh, the Legion Sense. It's like there's something else in here. Legion Sense. Never mind. All right, we're down a game to our final boss here. They don't make the final boss easy, that's for sure.
We're gonna have to draw two and three mana cards. It's Chupacabra on turn four isn't getting it done, but it's pretty unlikely that a five card hand's getting it done either, because red can grind really well. Cry of the Carnarium. No. It's a good quality draw right there. The v Viashino Pyromancer. Okay. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do Rotation Proof Esper Control. Thanks so much, nerds. Thank you so much. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Make sure to write that down here, too. All right, so on Monday we'll have Esper Control rotation proof there. Yeah, the Pyromancer just fit their fit their curve perfectly. That was a that was a great draw. So if they. They can go for just killing me here with the Wizard's Lightning upstairs. Okay, no. Or hold on to it to kill Cavalier of Night. Because if they go upstairs, then they just would have had to draw a 3 damage burn spell. I guess I should have, I guess I really, I really should have just blocked the Firebrand, forced them to have two burn spells there. That was a bad block. That was my fault. That's a bad block. If I don't make this block and we go to four, we are like really dead. So this on the other hand is a good block. Because, like, the then, like, the next turn, the champion has to just trump the Chain Whirler. Because otherwise, Chain... Like, then they just attack with Viashino and Chain Whirler, and then we have to block Chain Whirler. Otherwise, we're dead to the Firebrand. Uh, just all lands. That was, a, that was a bad block. I should have blocked the 1-1 one, one with my 4-5. We did not win, though. No final boss win for us. Yeah, we got trolled by our mana a couple of those losses. Um, I don't know. Like, matchup didn't seem too bad. Against Mono Red. You know, so we went 1-1 against Mono Red, and... Our opponent had some some good draws. We had some pretty bad draws, but I I made a bad block with the Cavalier of Night. That could have all been different if I just changed my block, and then obviously just just drawing lands like eight, nine, ten over and over and over. You know, like after we mulligan, we're not really winning with that too. So yeah, four and two, uh, not bad at all though. Uh, some so some things about the deck. Yeah, so this is a donation deck. Let's talk about it a little bit. I I didn't like Dreadshade. In here, I mean, the vampire stuff was good. Like Soren is just incredible. Um, like Dusk Legion Zealot, Soren Cavalier of Dusk, or sorry, Champion of Dusk. Like that was just a really good engine of just like getting us a lot of cards. And then obviously Knight of the Ebon Legion is really powerful. Um, 
And then some of these other value cards like Dread Presence, Chupacabra, Cavalier Knight are perfectly fine. But Aerialist and Dreadshade didn't really help with that kind of stuff at all. So didn't didn't really care for those cards. Uh, like enough of like more Midnight Reaper or like Plague Crafter. You know, I can understand wanting to get, have more cards, sorry, more three drops to get back with Cavalier of Night. But I want those three drops to actually do stuff and not just be a, a kind of big creature, which all that's all Aerialist and Dreadshade were. Let's say those are my two least favorite cards in the deck. Um, Haunts of High Tower also seems kind of unnecessary. That's another one that, again, I'd rather just have a, a more realistic card that's doing stuff um, over those three. So yeah, those those are the three I didn't really like too much. Um, Embodiment of Agonies, maybe it'd just be the same kind of thing. It, it's basically like a dread shade, just a big creature. Um, but you know, like with with them not being vampires and not being able to get counters with Soren or being able to sacrifice with Soren is is a little rough. I, I want them doing stuff. I want like like Midnight Reaper, Play Crafter. Or, uh, I don't know, There's there could be better options. Um, but I want them, to, you know, it could just be like more Dread Presence, Chupacabra, uh, or just other removal spells. I don't know, I, wa I want them doing stuff. Thought Distortion was pretty cool. The Bolas of Citadels were awesome. Man, that card is incredible, like against Control. That card is incredible. Loved that one. Urox Fen Fenlurker. There we go. Yeah, we get some Urox Fenlurkers in here. Like, those actually do stuff. Yeah, could be some Fenlurkers. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's Mono Black Vampires, though. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't I don't like Silent Gravestone in the sideboard. I don't think that card's worth the sideboard slot. Bloodfast is pretty mediocre as well, but fine. Like those Those could be better cards there. All right, but anyway, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there and feel free to leave a comment. But thanks for watching Mono Black Vampires, and I'll see you for the next video.